اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر سسٹرز ویلکم ٹو ویکلی ایمان بوسٹر سیریز بائی اکنا سسٹرز Today in this Dua Connection series, we will talk about the significance of Duas in connection with the hereafter, which is the Day of Judgment, Jannah and Naar. So I will, inshallah, start with a quick story. So as an older teenager, I was busy with life and did not have a very strong connection with Allah. Throughout the day, I would not connect with Him or remember him as much as I should, but at night when I lay down in bed to sleep, I would start thinking about the Day of Judgment. And the accountability of that day would take over my conscience. I would start talking to Allah, telling him how I did not have a good productive day, and start thinking about what my book of actions would look like on that day. Then I would start fearing the punishment of hellfire, and start desperately making dua for Jannah. And this happened every night for a long time. I would get upset with myself at night for wasting my day and not coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, the, through my words and actions. But during the day, I would again get busy and forget about that. And this happened for quite a while. It was later in life when I came across a narration in Sahih Bukhari where Aisha radiallahu anha reflected on the importance of our hearts being connected with the hereafter and that we have a firm belief that we will stand in front of Allah one day. And I think it was this little flicker of iman in my heart of that accountability of that day that eventually, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, brought me closer to Allah. So we know that Makkan surahs were mostly about Tawheed and the stories of previous nations and their prophets and countless ayahs about the Day of Judgment and very vivid description of Jannah and Nar. One of the many such ayahs is in Surah Al-Qamar, Ayah 46. Nay, the hour is the time promised them and that hour will be most grievous and most bitter. And we know that that hour of Day of Judgment is 50,000 years long because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told that to us in Surah Al-Marij, Ayah 4. So it is so important for us to read the Qur'an with that understanding of these ayahs and connect our hearts with that hereafter. So every time we read ayahs about, about Jannah, they should come to life for us. We should start imagining that we're in Jannah, we're the people of Jannah, we're sitting and enjoying those beautiful sceneries and gifts and pleasures of Jannah. And right away, our heart should say, Allahumma ja'alna minhum. O oh Allah, make us of them. Make dua to Allah genuinely with our heart. Ya Allah, I want to be in Jannah. And when we read ayahs of Nar, very scary ayahs of Nar, we should start to worry about our own result on that day of judgment. And we should fear that, that time, that moment, and our hearts should cry out the sincere dua, Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. O oh Allah, do not make us of them. And when we read ayahs about the hereafter, and how difficult that day is going to be. We should connect with these ayahs and read right away, say a dua for the protection of that day. And one such dua is, Allahumma hasibni hisaba yasira. O oh Allah, make my accounting an easy accounting, which is, of course, on that day of judgment. And this is a masnoon dua recorded by Imam Ahmad. So it is very important, again, to read the Qur'an, connect with these ayahs, make dua to Allah, and interact with the words of Allah, insha'Allah. Another very beautiful and powerful dua that is taught to us by Allah in the Qur'an, and as Muslims, we learn this at a very early age in our lives. And this dua is, 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أضعب النار And this dua is in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 201. Our Lord, grant us good in this world and good in the hereafter and save us from the punishment of the fire. Ameen. Inshallah, I am going to talk about this word us a little bit later on because these duas have the word us in it. So subhanAllah, in this dua, Allah tells us to ask for good in the dunya which means we want success in the dunya. We ask Allah to give us a good life, which means we ask Allah for his blessings. And when he grants them to us, we take advantage of these blessings and use them to get to Jannah. Enjoy them, be grateful for them, and use these blessings to get to Jannah. Then the second part of this dua, Allah is telling us to make dua for the good in the hereafter. And by that hereafter, we mean, of course, the day of judgment itself, and then success by going to Jannah and by not going to hellfire. So that is the good in the hereafter. And Allah also makes us repeat the last part by saying, وَقِنَا أَضَابَ nar." That we already said, Ya Allah, give us good in the hereafter, which means give us Jannah and keep us away from hellfire. But again, we're repeating the part about keeping us away from hellfire because it is that scary. That Allah makes us repeat that part that, Ya Allah, please keep me away from that hellfire. So again, we say this du'a with understanding. Most of us say this du'a after every salah. And this is one of the recommended du'as in, um, during the tawaf of the Kaaba as well. Here I want to remind myself and us, inshallah, about a very strong warning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tahrim, Ayah 6. O you who believe, save yourself and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. And the ayah continues. So again, it is very important for us to realize that there are certain actions that we have to do in our life that will earn us Jannah with Allah's mercy. And we have to make the efforts and obey Allah and worship Allah alone and do the right actions that will keep us away from this hellfire that Allah warns us about. And there are ayahs, which is a beautiful balance that Allah creates between Jannah and Nar, that Allah reminds us that inshallah there will be people entering Jannah in groups with their families, with their righteous friends. And so again, there is this beautiful balance created where you say, Ya Allah, make me of those people who enter Jannah in these groups with my families and my friends. So, and that is why Allah in several du'as in the Quran and in the Sunnah makes us say the word us. Because again, Allah is telling us in the Quran, save yourself and your families from hell, hellfire. So again, you do the action that bring you closer to Allah, that earn us Allah's pleasure and eventually the reward of Jannah. And we help others in doing the righteous actions together so that we go into Jannah as a family. And that's what I tell my children too. Sometimes they, um, of course, you know, teenage kids fight over the fact, the things that they have to do. And I always tell them, as a parent, I will do my best to make sure that we go to Jannah together. And of course, the rest is up to you, how your actions are going to be. But at least I want to stand in front of Allah and say, Ya Allah, as a parent, I did my job to make sure that my children and future generations came together. And of course, I don't even know where I'm going to go. And that is why 
we read the Quran, we interact with the ayahs, we understand the ayahs, we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our abilities, we are human beings, we make mistakes, and that's why we continue our connection with Allah through du'as. Lots of du'as that we've been learning throughout this du'a connection series, and also du'as about protection from that heavy day of the hereafter, and du'as about Jannah, and du'as about staying away from hellfire. And inshallah, towards the end, I am going to remind you and myself of this beautiful, beautiful hadith. It is narrated by Anas ibn Malik that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever asks Allah for Jannah three times, Jannah says, O oh Allah, admit him into Jannah. And whoever seeks deliverance from the fire, the fire says, O oh Allah, save him from the fire. This is a Sunan Tirmidhi hadith. How beautiful is this hadith? So we all know that the best position to make dua is when you're in sujood in front of Allah. We humble and we submit ourselves completely to Allah in our sajda. So we can make use of this hadith in our sujood by saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah three times, which means, O oh Allah, I ask you for jannah. And then jannah will make dua for us to Allah. And then we can also say, Allahumma ajirni min al-nar three times in our sujood. O oh Allah, protect me from the fire. Again, according to the hadith, the fire will make dua to Allah to save us from, from itself. So again, of course, we know that we can connect with Allah and make dua to Allah anytime. We don't have to wait for a special time or a special occasion or a special position. Whenever our hearts remember the hereafter, remember Jannah, remember Nar, we make dua to Allah in Arabic and in our own languages as well. And Allah has also told us that ask for Jannah al-Firdaus, ask for the highest level of Jannah. So we can say, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-Jannah al-Firdaus. Oh I, Allah, I ask you for the highest level of Jannah. Allah's mercy is infinite. We can ask him whatever we want, inshallah. And this was a reminder for myself and for all, for all of you, my dear sisters, Jazakallah khair, wa ma alayna illa al-balagh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.